Hello, everyone. Uh, Rob Garcia with Heritage Professional Products, and I'd like to thank everyone for attending our uh, virtual academy today. Uh, our topic today is going to be Wedding Agent 101, Understanding and Implementing Soil Water Management Products. So our presentation overview, we're going to look at why soils do not efficiently use water, uh, methods for improving water usage, techniques for applying this chemistry to the soils, improving water savings, and finally, how better soil moisture affects pesticide performance. Uh, first, we're going to start with an overview of soil structure and the function of soils. Uh, the three main soil particles are sand, which is 0.05 to 2 millimeters, silt, which is 0.002 to 0.05 millimeters, and clay, which is 0.002 all the way down to microscopic size particles. Uh, the fourth component in soil is organic matter. And organic matter is between 2 and 10% organic matter. Higher organic matter gives us better water movement, better overall water holding capacity, and a much more flocculent soil type. Um, the other part of soil is the uh, pore space. And the pore space is where the oxygen that's necessary for healthy plant growth and also water is stored from our irrigation and precipitation. Uh, the soil surface and the... Uh, living turf grass has, a, has an interface, and at that interface, uh, above it, we have live grass, and below it, between the soil surface and the live turf grass crown, is the thatch layer. Um, basically, the thatch layer is intermingled, decomposing plant material, and living shoots, stems, and roots. Um, we have two types of turf grasses that, that put out stolons uh, for stoloniferous types, and then we also have rhizomaceous. Um, turf type tall fescue, bluegrass would be examples, ryegrass also um, somewhat mimics that uh, growth characteristic. And so at this thatch layer, what we have going on is we have um, reached a point where the breakdown of the organic matter that's being produced is is less than and, 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 and is, is greater than what can be broken down. So what we start to have is accumulation. That thatch layer is very hydrophobic. So all that comes into play, the particle size, the thatch, and how water moves into the soil. Um, the next thing I'd like to go over is the origin of or soil organic matter. So we have plants, we have the actively growing um, leaf and stem, and we have the root system. So waxy plant leaves start to fall off and decay. So we have decomposing plant materials. We have microbial byproducts from the microbial population in the soils. And then we have the plant's root system exudates. So all of these help to, help to contribute to soil organic matter. So we want to look at and think about the molecule of organic matter, where we have a very hydrophilic, water-loving portion, and we have a very hydrophobic, water-repelling portion. So the water repelling the water repelling portion essentially um, sticks out from the soil particle, creating an area that is nonpolar around the entire soil particle. Um, next thing we want to look at is the soil water availability. So on the right we have the saturated soil, and we have a point where we reach field capacity. So this is essentially how much water that the soil can hold at any given time, the maximum amount of water that it can hold. Then we have another key point, which is the wilting point. And this is when we get to the point where all of the additional water that's being held in the soil is in a form that cannot be taken in by the root system. So the wilting point, we're going to start to see the decline of uh, plant material um, so when we're between the wilting point and field capacity, that's where we're gonna when we're gonna have healthy turf conditions. So we want to maintain that soil moisture content in the soil. We don't want to get too much so too much water in the soil so that we reach saturation, but yet we don't want to let the soil completely dry out because again, soil is very hard because of it being hydrophobic to rewet after you allow it to dry out completely. So, and what we get in the saturation point, we start to get the issues of disease and other problems with our turf grass. We do need to have oxygen 
in the soil profile to help with the root system and maintain good, healthy roots. And then if we get to that drying point, we start to have desiccation and we start to see the plant go into drought stress and we start to brown out and go dormant in many of our turf grass stands. So the intermolecular forces between water and soil. So we look at the soil, negatively charged soil particle on the surface, then we have tightly bound absorption water. Um, then we have a layer of loosely bound absorption water. So this is not held as tight as it could be to the soil particle. And then outside of that, we have the capillary water available to the roots. Now this is the water that's in a form that it's not being held tight enough that the root is able to take that water in and translocate it through the plant. Um, up in the corner, you'll see a good representation of the water molecule. Now remember, because water is H2O, two hydrogens, and an oxygen, we tend to create a polar molecule. We have a positive hydrogen part of the molecule and a, and a negative. So the electrons are being pulled towards the oxygen. So you see the representation of that ellipse where you have a negative and a positive water molecule. So let's look at the effects of soil hydrophobicity. So we have inconsistent water distribution. So we're not having poor, we have poor moisture uniformity of areas of dry, we have areas of wet, and we're inconsistent throughout the soil prof profile. So this can become from poor irrigation efficiency. So if we have inefficient irrigation, maybe we have uh, incorrect head spacing. We don't have the right heads in our irrigation system to give us good overall coverage. So we have an inefficient irrigation system, which is causing wet areas next to dry areas. Um, what's this do? It increases our hand watering to try to get some level of soil uniformity. Now, one of the things to note is now because we have some very good um, field uh, moisture data collectors, we can see that we have after an irrigation cycle, we can see areas by using a POGO or some of these other uh, measuring tools to show that we have after an irrigation cycle, very wet areas and very dry areas in the same irrigation zone. Um, this then creates preferential flow, essentially localized dry spot where the water moves uh, more efficiently through certain parts of the soil, less efficient, efficient through other parts of the soil, thus creating wet areas and dry areas next to each other in the soil profile. Um, after that, we start to have turf drought stress and the turf starts to be able to not uh, efficiently grow and we start to have overall turf grass decline. Um, this creating uh, an unhealthy turf grass stand. So when we have an unhealthy turf grass stand, we start to see issues with other pests and, and other stresses on that. So we start to see insect damage. We start to see disease. We start to see things happen with our turf grass stand. And a lot of it can be traced back to that overall drought stress uh, that's being caused by um, poor water distribution and inefficient irrigation. So ultimately in the end, what does this do? It increases our maintenance, maintenance costs. It increases hand watering. It, it makes us have to overseed because we have thin areas because we have poor water performance. So at the end of the day, our overall maintenance costs are gonna increase. So soil moisture, let's look at this like a sponge. And we're gonna go over some, some key terms when we're thinking about soil moisture and how water's held in the soil. So field capacity, uh, the sponge is saturated and cannot hold any more water. So essentially, we're at the point where the sponge is holding as much water as it can. Now, gravitational water, this is the last drop of water that has fallen from the sponge. So we've soaked up as much as we can. And those last little droplets that are pulled out of the sponge by the force of gravity are our gravitational water. Uh, capillary water. This is the where this is the available water between our gravitational water and our wilting point. So this is the water that can be utilized by the root system of the plant or the turf grass that we're trying to grow and take care of. Wilting point. This is the water remaining in the sponge is held so tightly to the soil particles that it cannot be absorbed by the root hairs. So this water is, is held. There is still, the water is not at complete dry down, which would be your hydro, hygroscopic water, which this is the water that's held so tightly that you need to dry down and bake the sponge in an oven to get that last little bit of water 
out of out of the sponge. So this is a you know, uh, basically when you're doing soil analysis, this is the step that they do first when they get your soil samples. They remove that hygroscopic water so it doesn't interfere with the, the testing and the analysis of that soil sample that you set in. Uh, soil water types, uh, adhesion versus cohesion. So we look at our chart and we basically can see everything from our oven dry to our gravitational water and field capacity, all the terms that we've just talked about. Now for that plant available water, we want to have the water between our adhesion and our cohesion. So that's our capillary water, the water that's available to the root and the, and the plant. So causes of hydrophobicity. Uh, you'll see our photo on the right-hand side. You'll see a soil particle um, taken with an electron microscope that is coated with organic acid, creating that hydrophobic condition with the soil particle. So organic acid buildup. So organic acids, essentially, because of all those factors with the decomposition of plant material, the, 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 the compounds that are given off by the microbial population, organic acids, um, they start to form on the soil particle almost immediately after we have uh, establishment of plants or turf grass. So slowly over time, we continually build up these organic acids creating a nonpolar uh, coating on the soil particle, causing it to be hydrophobic. Um, you look at the picture on the left, that's our non-coated, um, non-hydrophobic sand particle. Over time, we start to build up those coatings and create that hydrophobic condition. And these are the coatings and the condition that prevents water from being held in the soil. So deposition of hydrophobic organic matter on the soil particles. So we have our water... Uh, we have our hydropho hydrophilic, water-loving, polar part of the molecule. We have our hydrophobic, water-repellent, non-polar part of the molecule. And then we have our dissolved organic acids. So as they dry out in the soil and the soil starts to go into dry down and become um, lower in moisture content, we'll see that these, these organic acids attach to the soil particle and essentially create a coating so that when we have our next irrigation cycle or natural rainfall event, we're not able to um, hold any water on the soil particle, creating a very, very dry hydrophobic condition. But finally, the organic acids removal products. Um, we've mentioned ores, and essentially these are products that strip the organic acids off of the soil particle. Again, as I stated earlier, these types of products, you have to do repeated applications to be effective with this, with, with this chemistry. So improved turf quality. So here we have turf quality on a one to nine rating, very common uh, turf quality rating that's utilized. And you'll see that all of the products improved the, the, um, the turf quality over the control. Now, I'd like to note on this slide that of the products on this slide that are being that are being tested, many of them are are have different. Um, some are penetrants, some are some are some are blends, some are more retention products. But overall, they all improve turf quality by doing a better job of getting that getting the water that we're applying into the soil and addressing that hydrophobic condition, and then holding on to that holding on to that water subsequently so that it can be taken into the plant. So some things to think about when using wetting agents. Uh, wetting agents, again, break down via micro the microbes in the soil. So they need to be, they, there need to be repeated applications. Um, turf water needs vary throughout the year. So when we have low water demand, we can decrease our wetting agent applications, or in most cases, lower the rate to address that, that lower water demand by the turf grass. Um, the soil's ability to move and retain water varies throughout the year again. So in the spring, as the soils are starting to rehydrate, especially in the cool season mark and in areas of the country where we have an actual dormant winter part of the year, the soil is not as easily able to move and retain water. These are prime time. This is a prime time to utilize a wetting agent. Um, and what are the rate and product implications because of this? So when we have changes in the year, when we have changes in the demand, when we have 
cooler temperatures, all of those things come into play with us developing our program on what rate we should use, how often we should apply the product, and essentially what products we should apply. So um, we tested wetting agents for localized dry spot. Basically, we have localized dry spot versus time of the year after application. And you'll see that all of the wetting agents that were tested um, had better overall uh, localized dry spot um, than the checks. And you see over time, the checks started to develop more and more localized dry spot where the areas that have been treated with a wetting agent. And again, because of this, um, it, it's, it's not so important to understand that one wetting agent is better than the others. They all have specific uses, but each wetting agent is able to address localized dry spot um, when we look at it in a turf grass study. So here's a great uh, photo. Um, here's a comparison of soil course of treated areas versus untreated. So we see the treated area, we have good soil moisture uniformity throughout the entire root zone of the plug versus the untreated. We, we can see that we have a very hydrophobic condition going on in that soil. And because of that, we have, even though the, they were both treated and watered, um, the same, uh, the treated sample, uh, it shows much better soil moisture content. So you can really good illustration of how the hydrophobic condition affects the overall soil structure. So wetting agents affects on localized dry spot. Um, so the wetting agent plots uh, were treated and we measured the percent coverage. So the ones that were the greenest got the, got the greatest um, rating and you'll see that we contain good overall consistent coverage throughout the entire season versus the check. Uh, the check, the control would be the uh, blue line that started to fall off dramatically in the hottest time of the year. We did have some recoverage later in the year of overall coverage. That's, that's indicative usually of, of cool season turf grass um, in, during the season. So, Quantifying performance of wetting agents. So here's some of the testing methods for soil water performance. Uh, dines. This test shows the effects that the surfactant has on the surface tension. Again, addressing that surface tension of that polar water molecule, breaking it down, um, and, uh, and then subsequently um, measuring it in the soil but with dines. Um, so this is a good an indicator of how the surfactant will penetrate through barriers, thatch, and others into tight soils. So basically, the lower the dyne's perseminator, the more effective the surfactant is as a penetrant. You'll, so you'll see our Aquaflow Plus, we tested it at two rates, and you'll see that we had significantly less dyne's than we did with the uh, just water. So again, a measurement of the... Um, ability for the surfactant to move water into the soil profile. Uh, the contact angle, uh, this test demonstrates the effects of a surfactant on the reduction of surface tension. The lower the contact angle, which is measured in degrees, uh, the more effective the surfactant is as a penetrant. Again, showing that our Aquaflow Pus was able to um, perform better as a penetrant than just water, moving more of that water subsequently into the soil. The Draves wetting, uh, this is a unique study, a test that's done. So basically they'll take a very hydrophobic cotton skein, little ball of cotton, and they will put it into the solution and measure how long it takes for the water to penetrate into that, into that cotton ball and subsequently have the cotton ball sink through the water column. So uh, we tested this and at both concentrations, we significantly decreased the amount of time that it took for that cotton ball to sink in that measurement. Um, so that's a good test of the hydrophobic media, whether we're working with thatch, bark, peat, other barriers, any of those organic barriers that we're trying to move water through, Aquaflow Plus is going to create the ability for that water to move through in a much quicker period of time. Now, think about this. When we do that, then that water is going to let be less likely to um, be affected by evaporation. So we're not going to lose any of our water due to the high daytime temperatures and low humidity. 
So how do wedding agents function differently? So here we have three chemistries, and we're going to start to dip, drop them onto uh, a sand sample. Now, after a couple of drops, you'll see that one of the uh, chemistries is a much more um, lateral mover. So the water spreading out across the soil surface. And then the second chemistry is somewhere in the middle where the third chemistry is not so much of a lateral mover, but more of a vertical mover. So the water is moving down through the soil profile rather than across the surface of the soil profile. Um, so this was put together by uh, Dr. Weaver, and it's a good representation of where the different types of chemistries fit into um, you know, there's so many products out there in the industry now. So we want to look at where they fit into the overall chart. So we have our vertical wetting functionality on the left. We have our lateral wetting functionality on the bottom of our chart. And so um, things that are not great vertical and not great lateral wetting products, these would be our diluted products. These would be the injectable products, low concentration products um, that are pretty good at vertical and pretty good at lateral wetting function, but not gr really great at either. Then on the, on the upper um, left-hand side, we have our vertical wetters. So these are products that are great at moving water into the soil. Um, you'll see examples of Revolution, Aquasync, many very common products. So they're great vertical uh, wetters, but they're not, they're okay lateral wetters, but not great lateral. So they don't spread water out across the surface so much as move water into the surface and, and into the root profile. Um, we have our surface wetters, and these are great at moving water laterally. So they're going to, when applied, they're going to, when water is applied, they're going to move water across, or you're going to get good uniformity across the soil surface, but you're not going to get much movement into the soil. So you're going to have good uniformity, but if you're really trying to get your material, your wetting agent down and your water down into the root profile to create deeper root systems, this, these are not going to be the products you're going to want to use. Now we have our, in the upper right-hand corner, we have our multifunctional uh, chemistry. So these are products, Aquacare would be an example of a product like that, where you are a good vertical and also a good lateral wetter. So you're going to move water, not only uniformly across the soil surface, but also into the soil surface, into the soil profile, excuse me. So let's go back to our questions now, again, about wetting agents. So where do wetting agents bind in the soil? Well, that's going to be dependent on what type of a wetting agent, whether we have a lateral or a vertical wetting agent. Um, how do the how do the wetting agents affect surface firmness? So with our with our lateral wetters, where the majority of the water is going to be held in the upper soil surface, we can create some some issues with the firmness of the soil. So if we're trying to develop, a, say, a putting green where we want a good firm surface, but we want good also water movement into the soil profile. Uh, we're going to choose something that's more of a vertical wetter or the multifunctional type products. How long do wetting agents last? Now, again, we've talked about wetting agents um, are large carbon-based molecules. So those large carbon-based molecules are broken down by the microbial population. So rate of product is going to equal time of how long the product is going to last. And so, and it's also going to determine when you're going to need to make repetitive applications. Um, are wetting agents phytotoxic? Majority of the ones that are in that non-ionic uh, category that we discussed are have low phytotoxicity. Um, we need to be careful with older chemistry, older generations of wetting agents where we may have some alcohol. Those are going to tend to be more phytotoxic. Uh, those cationic ones are going to be very phytotoxic. So know what category your wetting agent fits into, and that's going to give you a good idea of, of how phytotoxic it is. Um, do wetting agents correct localized dry spot? Now, this is something that, that the, there's a lot of debate on. Wetting agents address localized dry spot. Do they correct it? Um, in most cases, my opinion has always been that they do not. They will address it, but again, because they don't last forever and they tend to start to break down over time due to them being large carbon-based molecules, 
they, I don't, I don't ever, I don't tell people that they correct it. They address it. They address the condition. But if we stop using those products, we're going to transition back to our, our original um, soil chemistry and structure. And we're going to start to have those localized dry spot issues again. Um, how do wetting agents correct organic acids? They don't so much correct organic acids. Again, we had very few products that fit into those th that category that addressed organic acids. So we had very few removal products like ours. So do they correct organic acids? Again, much like localized dry spot, they address the organic acids issue, but they don't correct it. They don't remove them from the soil particle for long periods of time. So where do we target our wetting agent portfolios? So I broke it down into sports turf, lawn, and ornamentals. So for sports turf, retention products, that would be aqua care. That would be mainly in sand-based systems. Uh, our retention with a penetrant is going to be aqua sink. So you're going to have both a good vertical um, and also a great lateral wetter. And these are going to be utilized in native soils, uh, lawn care. Uh, retention products with a penetrant, that's again going to be AquaSync. Now, if we have heavily compacted soils that are, are, we're not so much concerned about holding water in that tiny pore space, but we're just trying to get the water to be able to penetrate into the soil, that's going to be more, uh, more like an AquaFlow Plus. So that's going to be a great product for heavily compacted soils. Ornamentals, uh, our retention with a penetrant, AquaSync, that's going to be great in your landscape settings and in native soils. Um, as for penetrants, if we have ornamentals that are uh, planted in heavily compacted areas where we have excess water sitting in the root zone, potentially creating disease issues within the root system of the ornamentals, I'm going to utilize a penetrant, AquaFlow Plus, to help move that water uh, more efficiently away from those root systems, allow the, allow the ornamentals to take in the amount of water that they need, um, but not sit in a, in a saturated situation. Uh, one of the things that I noted earlier also was that we need to have some oxygen in the pore space to have efficient plant growth. So keeping, it, keeping those areas around those ornamentals too wet is going to decrease the oxygen and potentially increase some of the disease issues that may occur with ornamentals. A wetting agent. So uh, I'm going to highlight AquaSync. Um, it's a wetting agent. It's as a, it's a great penetrant, um, excellent for localized dry spot. Um, increase the water in the thatch and heavy soil. So it increased the movement through the thatch and down into the soils again because it's a great penetrant. So AquaSync wetting agent. Uh, it's a unique combination of soil surfactants that reduces the so surface tension of water, allowing it to flow into the soil more readily while also improving the retention of water in the soils. Um, this results ultimately in a, a more uniform distribution, uh, addressing that localized dry spot. It creates a more uh, consistent plane surface if you're working with sports turf and enhances the overall visual uh, appearance of the turf grass. You start to not see those and in, in the hottest time of the day, we start to see part of our turf grass stand start to um, go into a little bit of drought, drought stress, start to blue out a little bit is a term that you hear uh, superintendents and turf grass managers use as we start to go into a stressed condition. Um, this starts to ma mask those um, and enhances that overall visual appearance. So the AquaSync wetting agent features um, a blend of penetrance and retention capabilities performs uh, in the top group of wetting agents for surface firmness um, on multiple types of soil. So it's a great product when you have a diverse um, soil profile and great preventer of localized dry spot, um, flexible rates and timing. So you're able to essentially dial in a program that fits how often you spray and how often um, you need and, and also takes into account temperature, and weather conditions, natural rainfall, so we can adjust the rates and the timing. Um, and it also minimizes the number of products because you are getting both a penetrant and a retention product. So what are some of the benefits of using AquaSync wetting agent? Uh, moves water off the surface and down into the soil. Uh, minimizes localized dry spot occurrence. 
So we start to minimize those areas of extremely dry conditions in our soil profile. Uh, retains water to stretch irrigation intervals. So great product. If you start to get into an area where you're going under um, irrigation restrictions, maybe you had an abnormally dry spring, so they've cut back the number of days you're allowed to water, this can stretch those irrigation uh, intervals and still give you the turf grass quality that you're looking for. Um, optimizes, uh, optimize to deal with changing weather conditions. So if it's if it's overly if it's overly uh, wet and we're getting excessive rainfall, uh, it's going to help to move that rainfall into the soil profile. But it's also going to be able to retain and hold the water during dry spells in your. And we also have a flexible rates again. So our rates are: we have weekly, biweekly, monthly. Essentially, we can spray between two and six ounces every month. Um, and we'll be able to dial in again. We're going to look at our soil conditions. We're going to look at our soil types. We're going to look at our application intervals to really try to pinpoint what rate is going to be most effective with AquaSync. So here's a great illustration of AquaSync improving the um, improving the movement of water into uh, an organic material. Um, in this case, we're using some 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 peat and bark. So you'll see where the aqua sink, the water moves almost immediately in, where on the just water uh, test, you'll see that the water sits on top of the organic matter and eventually at a certain point actually runs off. So we're getting great water movement into that hydrophobic condition of uh, peat and bark. Uh, the next one here, here we have a, a sand-based situation where the same thing. We have good uniform movement across the surface and into the soil profile with the AquaSync, whereas with the hydrophobic uh, sand condition, you see that the water beads up, can't break the surface tension, and eventually runs off. So AquaFlow Plus, that's going to be our penetrant. Um, it's a wetting agent. It does have some retention and, and penetrant uh, capabilities. Um, excellent for sand-based systems likes to hold water in the root, root zone, and also does have some buffering capacity. Aquaflow Plus is at a pH of about three. So when utilizing it in alkaline situations with alkaline irrigation water, you are also going to get some buffering capacity with Aquaflow Plus. Um, some highlights of Aqu Aquaflow Plus, label for turf and ornamental use, uh, safer on turf and plants than the original formulation. Um, which we also did improve the overall performance. Uh, primarily a penetrant wetting agent, but it does have some retention capability. Uh, can assist reduction in localized dry spots, so it is able to move water more efficiently through those hydrophobic thatch areas and down into the soil profile. Um, reduces dew formation, so when you are applying it, because it is working as a, a penetrant, if you have dew issues, if you're a golf course or a sports turf that has potential um, dew issues in the cooler times of the year, in the spring and the fall, you can reduce that dew formation because it's essentially going to break the surface tension down, allow that small amount of water to be moved into the soil surface. We have very flexible rates, um, and we also do have an injection label. So if you have injection capability, and compacted soils, other issues, Aquaflow Plus would be a great additive to your program. So why should customers use Aquaflow Plus wetting agent? Um, so Aquaflow Plus quickly moves soil water through the soil profile, uh, leads to drier, firmer surfaces, doesn't allow water to pool on the surface uh, when compared to untreated soil. Uh, it has a, uh, the ability to reduce um, the effects of localized dry spot, again, moving water uh, as a penetrant into those into those hydrophobic areas. Um, but unlike uh, many penetrants, and again, one of the reasons why we reformulated Aquaflow Plus was to reduce the risks of phytotoxicity. So the new formulation is much safer on turf, and we don't have any uh, discoloration issues in high heat or low humidity. Um, the last one we're going to talk about, uh, AquaCare, where well, this is our preventative multifunctional wetting agent, um, better water holding in dry conditions, um, still maintains a good firm surface because it is multifunctional and does exhibit both lateral and vertical movement, um, doesn't get held up in the thatch, 
So we don't have the um, wetting agent binding to the thatch. Um, it's able to move down into the soil profile where it's needed. And this is a product that is excellent for sand-based systems. Um, so let's finish up here and talk about some application timing and application techniques. So application timing. We have preventative treatments. Uh, these are applications that are made on a consistent, repetitive schedule throughout the growing season. Essentially, think about preventative treatments as we address the issues that we've exhibited in the past in the soil profile and are going to put a program together to maintain consistent levels of the wetting agent in the soil profile to address these issues. So we put out our spring application and depending on the rate, we put out repetitive applications throughout the entire growing season. Curative applications, um, these are made after the plant starts to show decreases in its overall health, whether it's drought, poor irrigation, or localized dry spot. So essentially we're starting to see the effects of one of these factors and we are going to make a curative application. Um, my, my, my choice is always gonna be preventative. Um, these products work better if we address the conditions. Um, they work better if we don't allow the soil to completely dry down when we have to rehydrate the soil, which takes time. And um, when that happens, we start to see more of a, more of a um, hydrophobic condition because of that drying down, because of that drying of the organic acids on the soil profile. So some application techniques. Now, this is one of the things that um, um, I think is key with wetting agents. We have many ways to put these products down. We have granular applications. These are great for curative applications or in hard to spray areas. Um, so we have a granular product. Many times it's in an inert carrier. Um, example would be Biodac. That's a carrier that's used frequently in our industry. And um, we can also utilize them in hard to spray areas, bunkers, berms, slopes, areas that are hard to spray, hard to get spray equipment on. These are great um, applications for granular wetting agents. Our liquid applications, uh, these are gonna be our most versatile application techniques and can be used both as a preventative and also as a curative. It gives us the ability to adjust rate. It gives the ability to adjust timing. Um, we're able to add other products into the tank mix so we can we can put out nutritional products and wetting agents, PGRs, et cetera, all in one liquid application. So definitely the most versatile way to apply wetting agents. Um, we have irrigation pellets. Uh, these are great for curative applications where you use a simple hose end applicator with a concentrated pellet. So if you have areas, um, whether it's lawn care, uh, golf course, you're working off a quick coupler, sports turf, et cetera, you wanna get out, you have a couple areas with some localized dry spot, but we're in between interval applications. These are great application. This is a great application technique to make applications and to be able to concentrate on just those specific areas um, and also address it with some hand watering at the same time. Uh, injection, these are um, best as a preventative application through the irrigation system. And the key is it requires little labor. So once you have your system set up and calibrated, you're able to put out um, specific amounts of an injectable product. Now, one of the things that we have to address with this is that many of these injectable products tend to be more in the lower left-hand quarter of the, uh, of the uh, vertical versus lateral movement uh, chart that we looked at earlier. So they're going to be not great lateral, not great vertical, but the benefit is that they don't require much labor and they're easy to apply. They're also easy to control based on your irrigation cycles, um, the amount and frequency that you put these products out. Uh, the last one we're going to talk about is applications on fertilizer carriers. Uh, this is an easy method to apply an application of a wetting agent when you make your fertilizer applications for plants or turf grass. Uh, great method for turf managers that don't have liquid capabilities. So I work with a lot of, of, of uh, customers uh, that they don't have liquid applications. They have very large areas of turf. Uh, maybe they're under water restrictions or they have uh, inferior irrigation. So they're looking for a way to put out wetting agents in a timely manner. 
and be able to do it when they are doing something they're already applying. So I have a lot of customers that, you know, are on, you know, three or four applications of fertilizer per year. We put a product out each time with a wedding agent on that product. We put, we can put some other things in the bag as well, but it gives us the ability to do it um, and do it on very large areas. It would be difficult or almost impossible for some of these landscape or municipal applicators to, to uh, do during the growing season. So some tips for improving performance and efficiency um, during cooler weather, lower our rates. We don't have as high of a microbial activity, um, so we can go at lower rates. We can spread those applications out a little bit. As the, as the temperatures increase, as we get into the hotter times of the year, um, we're going to need to increase the rates to achieve the desired results. So putting out a lower rate in the spring, putting out a little lower rate in the fall, but concentrating our uh, and, and, and increasing our rates during the summer months is going to be helpful and give us the performance that we're looking for. Um, look for wedding agents that are not phytotoxic. So when you look at products or you've tried products, you know, be critical on on the products you, that you're that you're um, looking at applying. Um, if you have a product that is a little more phytotoxic, you're going to need to water it in sooner to not have dam plant material damage. So looking for lower phytotoxic products is going to be a good way to um, not have to immediately water in your wetting agent applications. Um, water in as soon as applications are made or, or it's, it's uh, to, move the to move the wetting agent into the soil. Um, again, in many situations, we're going to make applications in the morning when we make our other nutritional applications, especially if we're doing liquid applications. Or if we're doing granular applications, we need to water those uh, applications in so that we get the material to start moving into the soil. Um, if you're using lower amounts of water as a carrier, um, you're going to need to also irrigate a little bit longer. So most labels are going to have some type of an irrigation interval. Some of them um, spell it out in an actual amount, you know, quarter inch of 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 water per um per thousand square feet type of a type of a of of numbers so if you have a very low carrier you're using your ultra low volume um riding sprayers use a longer cycle get that material down into the soil where it can be most effective so next thing we're going to talk about is improving fertilizer and pesticide performance um, so improves fertilizer performance. So basically they improve uh, distribution of fertilizer in the root zone. They increase uptake and uh, they increase the, uh, the efficacy and efficiency of your granular fertilizer applications. So if you are utilizing wetting agents in your program, but you also are putting down granulars, when you put down that granular application, again, one of the recommendations is always going to be to water in those granular fertilizer applications. So when you water them in, the nutritional products, as they dissolve and are moved in, they're going to move in more uh, efficiently with greater equal distribution throughout the root system. Um, we also do improve the movement of pesticides into the soil. So all of our soil-based applications um, need the product to be moved uniformly into the upper soil layer for maximum control. Um, this is this is our 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 soil insecticides, fungicides, pre-emergence. If we get more uniform lateral control and movement into the soil because we have a wetting agent present or even a wetting agent in the tank, we're going to improve the performance of those products. What that's going to give us is greater control with those products on what we're trying to control, whether it's a insect, a disease, or trying to improve our overall pre-emergent um, applications. So just some questions again about wetting agents. Um, we've talked about this again, where do they bind? To how do they affect the soil firmness? Um, how long do wetting agents last? Are wetting agents phytotoxic? Uh, do wetting agents correct localized dry spots? Um, and how do they correct or do they correct and how do they correct organic acids? So hopefully now that we've went through, we started with those questions. We talked about them briefly. Hopefully we're now able to answer these questions um, at the end of the presentation. So if there's nothing else, do we have any questions? Thank you.